Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games, and today we will continue learning Gary Grigsby's War in the West. Now this is part three of that basic tutorial, and in this section we are going to look at the map itself and all of the things that are represented on the stock or default map. Now last time we looked at the map information screen where you can put you know various types of information on the map, but this time we're going to go down and look at what is actually on the map uh, when you boot up the grand scenario, and so this is the big one, the the big scenario, 43 to 45. Um, I've already clicked off of the automatic error directive creation, which is the first thing you always see, just so we can see the map. And the first thing to notice here is there is a map key, just like all great board games, and this is really a great board game that can do things that can only be done on the PC. Uh, it has a key. And so we can look up here, we've got mountains and rough, light woods, heavy woods, clear, railroads, majors and minor rivers, uh, so on and so forth. You can see that. Some of the things to pay attention to are the demarcations for urban areas. You could be a town, which is just a dot, and you can see these dots out here on the map. Those represent towns. You could have a city a light urban or a heavy urban area such as London or Berlin. Now, those are going to have all kinds of different uh, penalties if you attack them or bonuses if you're defending them. Uh, they'll have different movement costs based on how they are uh, labeled here in the game, okay? Uh, also, another thing to uh, really pay attention to is airfield size, and you can see that here, one, two, and three, that's a size one airfield, and you will only be able to put a certain number of engines on that airfield, okay? And so, in this case, it would be a hundred engines, and what does that mean? Well, you know, aircraft, of course, can be one engine, two engine, or four engine craft, and to keep you from just stacking little bitty air bases or airfields uh, with a bunch of big four engine heavy bombers, um, they do they count them by engines and so of course you could only put on 25 percent as many planes on a level one airfield as you could put uh one engine plane so you could put 101 engine planes 25 four engine planes of course that means 52 engine planes look at me a mathematician um ports are very important here of course seas and swamps this is a special one uh fairies we'll talk about that uh, some other time uh, there is also a uh, bocage here in the north of france and belgium uh, and that will also affect movement cost and defense bonuses attacking penalties uh, etc and I guess Mount Etna is impo impassable. Okay, good to know. Uh, I've never encountered that problem, but I now I know. All right, so let's get down here in the map, and you can see uh, we're up in we were over in Holland. We can come down here into France um, and look around a bit. There we are. Now we're in France, and of course these are all. German units sitting here in France as we start the game in July of 1943. Okay, so what do we see on the map? Now we talked about this. Dover is considered a town, and if we hover over Dover, uh, it's got kind of a randomly assigned number to it, 2973. Dover is a size four town. Now that is done in hundreds of thousands. And so Dover, I guess, ha or did have a population at this time of about 400,000. If we hovered over London or West London here, it says 34. That would be about 3.4 million. Now, if we continue here with West London, you see AA. Uh, colon 160. What does that mean? Well, that is how much anti-aircraft is actually attached to West London. And so you can attach anti-aircraft uh, subunits or what are called support units in this game directly to towns so that you get anti-aircraft. You can also attach it to airfields if you wanted to. Uh, we'll get more into that later. Um, but that's what the AA is. That's like the level of it. Okay. Um, this, West London, is considered heavy urban, so we saw those different, different 
differentiations, easy for me to say, um, up to heavy urban, which is the largest city type or town type, uh, is heavy urban. It tells you the hex number, 81, uh, that's running east to west, and then 176 north to south. Let's just make sure that's true. Yes, that is true. Uh, we move down one, and that becomes 177, 178. Uh, so first is east-west, uh, north-south is second number. It says it's in Britain. Uh, we probably already knew that. And then it says good roads. Now, every single hex in this game, and hexes are 10 miles across, okay? So they are 10 miles uh, pretty detailed, you know, when you get down to 10-mile hexes through all of Western Europe. Uh, but every hex is rated for its roads. They could either be poor, average, or good, okay? And, of course, if they're good roads, you'll have a lower movement cost through that hex. Average roads, obviously, a little higher movement costs. And <clears throat> why does that matter? Well, each one of your units, and you can see the unit counters here, has so many movement points at the start of each turn. Now that is determined through all kinds of factors, depending on how much fuel and supply they have, how good their commanders are, whether they pass ratings checks. Um, so it can have a lot of different factors that go into how many movement points they have at the start. Um, but as a base level, uh, all other things being you know excellent and they've passed all their tests, fully supplied, fully fueled, uh, infantry units have 16 movement points at the start of a turn, and motorized units, generally being armored, but motorized units have 50, all right? So motorized units can move, all other things being equal, about three times as far as infantry units can, okay? And so that's what you would start with. Well, when you start moving through hexes, it costs you so many points to move through there. If there are good roads, then it costs you less. Uh, if there are poor roads, it costs you more. Okay? And so, as I said, every single hex in this game is rated for its road quality. Then you see here rail, 50,000, 25,000. We'll get more into rail when, it, uh, when we get to the logistics part of this tutorial. Uh, but basically all you need to know now is, well, there's a railway that runs through here, and you can see that uh, just on the map. And railways are very important in this game, just as they are in war in the east, uh, to move supply, uh, to move fuel, and to move your replacements uh, or, you know, troops, reinforcements. Uh, very important to move those as well. And so we'll deep dive into rail. Uh, climate, temperate, humid, okay. Ground weather is clear. Air weather is clear. And of course, we talked last time about weather. You can see that on the map. You can get the representations here for both ground weather and air weather. And they do make a difference, uh, the differentiation, because they can be a little bit different. It could be muddy on the ground, but it could be clear in the sky now. Maybe the front has moved through. And so you can see both uh, on the pop-up. And again, I'm just hovering over this hex. I didn't have to click anything. This will happen in every hex in the game. Um, water and snow is shown right below that. So if there has been any precipitation, you will know that. Um, you'll see here the WA rail usage zero. Again, that's for logistics, but you know that there is rail here. Uh, this is actually referring to a rail yard. And uh, again, we'll talk about that later. Major river to the southeast and the southwest. So it will always tell you if um, there is rail coming in and out of the hex. It will also tell you you know, if you just can't tell, sometimes you get down here for minor rivers and you're like, you know, once there's a bunch of counters here, you'd be like, well, I, I'm not sure. Is there a river between this hex and that hex? Uh, you can always see that by hovering. For instance, if we hover here, you see that axis rail, okay, minor river to the southeast, southwest and west on the hex sides. Rail goes out to the east, southeast and west. You know, you can always see that. Uh, we'll just stay down here. Uh, you'll see attached to city. 
695th Heavy Flak Battalion. And this is what I was talking about, is you can actually attach these directly to a city. And if we go up there to Amiens, you can see the AA rating is listed as a 24. It goes from zero being none, uh, and then goes higher as you attach more capability, anti-aircraft capability. You can also see right below that, that there is an airbase here and it is a size three airbase again there are three different sizes one two and three uh, one can take 100 engines two can take 200 engines three can take 400 engines so it actually doubles from two okay you can see how much damage we know now we've got a little fog of war here right this is uh access held territory but it would show you damage that you know about to the airfield and it gives you a detection level of three now that runs from like one to ten uh so you can see how much detection you have on that if you've run recon over it you know you can start to raise that detection level and you'll have a better idea of what is going on at that hex or in this case at that airbase um, you see that there are two units in this hex the 35th uh, security regiment it then goes on to give you a estimated offensive and defensive combat value for those and we'll get much more into that uh, then it tells you but you have a detection level of zero this is just something that a spy on the ground must have told you uh, because you don't really know for sure until that detection level goes up uh, there's also the 9th ss uh, panzer grenader division or grenadier if you wish uh it's got an eight offensive combat value a 28 defensive combat value but again we have a detection zero so you're not really sure uh for sure and then below that you'll see this pop up this blue box and that goes through all of the different armaments that may be in those units as far as we know and as you can see if you look down here you know, they've got four heavy artillery guns, 24 artillery, uh, 35 Panzer Ds, okay, nine Tigers. So you can kind of go through here and see what they're actually made of. And that is the Hex pop-up. Let's go back up here to West London and just see if there were any things here in West London that we didn't see otherwise. Now, these are our own forces, so we'll have a lot more information about them, obviously, right? Um, attached to the city, we have three different uh, anti-aircraft uh, units. Uh, we have the London uh, British Mixed uh, AA Brigade, and then we have two regiments there as well. So three all together. That's why that AA score is up to 160. Of course, uh, the Blitz, you know, there's going to be a lot of anti-aircraft in and around London. Um, you also see that there are three units here the 8th U.S. Air Force, okay, uh, you see combat units, support units, and movement points, all right? Now, these are headquarters units, and again, we'll get more into that. So you're not seeing any combat value per se, uh, you know, the, it says zero combat units, right? This is a headquarters unit. A combat unit would actually be an infantry or motorized unit. That's considered a combat unit. And then you also see the RAF Coastal Command. Uh, it's got 50 movement points. If you wanted to move it, you probably won't. You would leave these in London. Um, and then you have the UK Home Forces headquarters, okay, and what is under their command. And that is 12 combat units, five support units, and it, have, it has 50 movement points. Now then, if you click down on the map here, you can see the actual un units on the hex. So a left click to the map. To, on the mouse uh, on this hex will bring up what is in this hex from a unit perspective and now you can see the actual counters here and we'll go into counters uh, momentarily but you can see these here uh, now we knew that UK Home Forces was commanding if we float over this again 12 different combat units and five support units okay well if we're on this and this is how you do this over here on the right you can just click left click on them you can select multiple if you want or just one so home forces you say what are all these lines well these are all of the lines of what the uk home forces commands and so these blue lines go out and if you don't see these from a command unit just hit shift z 
and shift Z will then draw these so you can actually see what this headquarters is commanding. Now, if we go to this headquarters, you can see as well. Now, these are a little closer. This is the second uh, CA core here for, um, oh, the Canadian. Oh, they're Canadians. Yeah, this is the Canadian uh, coloring scheme here. So you see the second Canadian core. All right. And you can see what it directly commands in blue here and it will draw blue lines out to it all right um now just going further on the map here of course we already saw in the uh the map key what a major river looks like it's very dark blue what a minor river looks like now you're going to take various penalties for crossing over a minor river those only go up when you go over a, a major river whether that be attacking over it uh, or how many movement points it costs to move across the river or to attack across the river, you will get various penalties depending on whether that is a major river, as we see down here, or a minor river up here by St. Albans, uh, as you see. And then you will also see the ports here. So every place that you have a port, uh, you will see this anchor. And then you'll see the airfields, size one, size two, and size three. Now, the in the green here um, means that this uh, air base is uh, fine from a stacking perspective. Uh, red, I believe, I'll have to check. I've been playing so much War in the East, I almost forget now. Uh, but red, I believe, means there are no aircraft on this air base and i could go around here i guess and see uh yeah it looks like it means no aircraft is on the air base so you can very quickly see whether a uh, air base has aircraft on it or not in red no okay and we'll go much deeper into the air war as we get moving along here um if you do see a hex like this that let's say has this um anchor on it here you can also go up here and go look at it so you can see ramsgate right up here and a hyperlink to it and so you see it does have a port here and you click on ramsgate and that brings up information about ramsgate imagine that um, nation player population 600,000 people evidently uh, at this time period supply fuel oil resource we'll get into all of that um, you see here that it does have a port and only has one I you know I'm not sure do places have multiple ports I don't believe so uh, rail yards they can have multiple of but they've got one here and then something called manpower which really goes to production uh, that we'll get into uh, later you can see its supply priority of course that's logistics you could disband the depot here if you wanted to um, you can assign anti-aircraft and that's how we would do it to directly attach it to a town and then it would show you, you know, which uh, units were attached right here. Or you could build an airbase here if you wanted to. And so you click here. No, we're not going to do that right now. And so right over here, uh, anytime you're on a town, we could do the same with West London and bring up everything about West London uh, and see what's attached, you know, what all's going on here. Now, there are five different zoom levels, so you can go all the way out. You can go all the way in all right um here you see rough and again you know when it comes to it's not just roads of course that matter when it comes to movement costs it can also be the type of terrain uh here we've got rough uh what do we have here we've got a swamp there is a swamp down here to the southeast of portsmouth and you know as you go around they will cost different movement points to move through or to attack into or you get bonuses to defend out of and so just always be very cognizant of what kind of terrain you're dealing with we already talked about the crossing the rivers of course that costs more and you get penalties when you attack that way uh here out here you have the bocage or bocage if you will uh, in the netherlands that also has different bonuses penalties and whatnot let's go into germany itself and let's talk about some of the map 
items that you can put on the map. So we've talked about these, but let's see them actually on the map. When we click on this, you see what are enemy hexes. Uh, in this case, the enemy is the Axis. And of course, we uh, have clear hexes here as the allies. All of these are enemy hexes. If we back up and go down uh, Italy way, you'll see Sicily here, enemy hexes. You'll see clear where we control in Northern Africa. All right, um, let's take that off very quickly. The next one is fort levels. Now we talked about this, but now that we have this scenario uh, up, we can talk about it a little more. You can see the fort levels here. And if we go down, you can see fort three, okay, and 10%. What does that mean? Well, it means we're at a level three fort. I bet you got that part. Uh, and we're 10% of the way to, I say we, the axis is 10% of the way to a level four port, all right? Or, <laughs> Port. Fort, uh, level four fort. And so every fort level, of course, comes with certain bonuses and penalties. If you're going to attack into this, you better bring engineers along the way to help you get rid of that fort level. Uh, that's for a different episode. Uh, again, looking out here, you see the full rail network. Very important. You will have rail repair units. And I think we can see one right here. All they are here for is to repair rails. And so if we get off of everything here, you can see all of these rails are fine. And so we don't need to repair them. Because of fog of war, we don't know what this rail, what the state of it is. Uh, but as we get into France, uh, some of this will be damaged by the axis. And we'll have to use these specialized rail units to go along and repair it. Okay, And so that's how you would see that. Um, you know, the units that are isolated, a little bit low on supply, you can see are highlighted here a little bit. Now, these aren't isolated, but they can be a little too far from supply or their headquarters. It would tell you that information. Uh, logistics. Okay, and now this is your depot system. And of course, we will go deep into depots, but this is the representation of them on the map. This is every place that you have a depot, and you can see how much freight in this game deals in freight. Now that can either, there are essentially three different products. There are, um, there is supplies, gen, you know, there is generally what we call supply, but there's also the specific supply, which is really like food, uniforms, all of those kind of things. Then you have fuel, which I think speaks for itself. And then finally you have ammunition. And so every unit in the game it will tell you supply, 101%, fuel, 95%, ammunition, 95%. Those are the three big sort of abstracted things that make up general overall supply. Um, it's a little confusing when I use it that way. I get that because you do have a specific one that's called supply. But if I ever just throw out their supply, I'm generally talking about all three when we talk about logistics. They move down railways, okay? Once they get to depots, then they would move by truck, and that's what really comes into play up here. All right, um, we can see factories, and when we do that, you can see the factories out here. We have a port. It was all of these things listed. If we go back up to Ramsgate, uh, a rail yard, you saw the rail, right? Manpower, you see little men, now, this one looks interesting. Let's go to this one instead, because it's got an armaments factory here at uh, Aldershot. And let's go to Aldershot. And you can see here, uh, it makes Bryn Mortar Carriers, Universal Carriers, the Wasp Carrier uh, vehicles are made here. Uh, it's got a rail yard and manpower. And you'll see these little icons. Let's get off that for a second. Of the carriers here, you'll see the manpower, the rail yards. Um, you can't move where these are really, but you can see them here on the map. It becomes especially important once you start to get recon levels on the Germans or the Axis uh, writ large, because then you can try to bomb those factories and damage them. So if they've got a bunch of tank factories somewhere, uh, let's say in Munster, you can start trying to bomb Munster and take out those factories, okay? Uh, then we have something called recon levels. Again, 
you know, it's purple if you have no recon level, green if you do, and we talked about this, and the interdiction levels. Uh, let's see, are we seeing any interdiction levels? No. I don't see any on here yet, as we've just started. Um, <clears throat> And so on and so forth. You can see your air directives out here. Of course, we're going to talk about that in the air section. Uh, but if you want to see which air directives you've given the Air Force, you can do that just like this. And you can also see the weather on the map. Now, a couple other things I want to point out. These are ferries. This is considered the ferry icon. And ferries, you can kind of think of almost like roads. You can move things across them depending on how big the ferry is. Uh, we'll get into that. Uh, some other time. Not in this episode. Okay, so what else do we see on the map here? We see our unit counters, and we're going to spend a whole episode next time talking about all of the information on unit counters, but you have a few basic types. Okay, and let's take that off. You have headquarters units, and in this case, 3Xs, it's a core headquarters. Okay, core headquarters report up to, this is generally your smallest headquarter unit it can only um it can only command up to 10 command points that you see over here so it's cu currently commanding four now usually a division is worth two points and so it's very likely commanding two divisions he says that and he's wrong uh it's actually commanding two uh this is a regiment a regiment and this is a division. So this is worth two. These are both worth one for command point purposes, adding up to four. They can command up to 10. And if I get my little pencil out here, because I love to do that, we start down here at the bottom level and you have regiments and brigades. Okay, they're the smallest units. You could even have companies. Um, it could be that small. Those are the smallest units in the game, uh, whether they be on the map or not on the map in the case of support units, but we'll get into support units. The next level up would be divisions, okay? And all of those are commanded by core headquarters. And that's what this is, is a core headquarter. All right, that's that. Core headquarters are then further commanded by army headquarters. And army headquarters will have the same idea of command points, and it will be able to directly command various cores. You can see the army headquarters is here. And then finally, army headquarters are generally uh, commanded either by army group headquarters or overall head command. And we'll actually click off this and go see what we're dealing with here. This is the second British army. It is actually commanded by an army group. So 21st uh, British army group. And if we click on that, it is underneath all of here, but you can see it. Uh, 21st British army group. And then ultimately it is commanded by the high command, which is UK home forces HQ. You can always see that over here. Um, Let's see if we can find any other big command headquarters. These may be the major ones uh, that are here at the home aisles. So core to army, army to army group. If we click on that, army group is here. And then army group all the way up to uh, the home, UK Home Forces headquarters. The other icons that you will see out here, or counters, I should say, are various of the high commands for the air so raf bomber command raf tactical okay so these are the air counters you can see them here they've got the infinity sign now for the most part these really aren't going to be moving much they are the high air commands and what do i mean by that well your air forces are, of course are made up by individual airplanes that are then put into air groups, and those air groups will be stationed at bases. You don't actually see them on the map. They are attached to these, ba I say attached, but they're stationed there at these bases, and you just see the high air commands, okay? And so you can move these counters around, but you probably won't be doing much of it. So we already talked about headquarters, whether it be core army army group or all the way up to the high command which in this case is home forces we also have infantry the nato infantry sign of course 
armor you can see here uh, is kind of in a broad category motorized this is a motorized unit uh, it is treated much like armor for movement purposes and how many points you get and so those are the main different types of counters now one additional one that i do want to point out and you can see the axis has the same infantry this is an army headquarters uh this is a headquarters uh let's see it's a panzer division here uh and then you have a core headquarters you have these that are called fortified units and you can actually build these uh and so these are just kind of almost like defensive fortifications that you put up on the map so if you were just looking around and you're like what the heck are those uh that is what this represents um i think that's the main types you can see every army in the game has the same italian air command you can see here on both sides of the top of the northern part of Italy. Um, if we come down here and look at our allied troops again, uh, you can see the same stuff here. You can see, you know, this is actually a mountain unit. Uh, you can tell because it's infantry, but it's got the little mountain in there. Here is an air command, another British Corps headquarters. Uh, one other additional or a couple additional ones that I wanted to point out though, are these are your airborne divisions with parachutes you probably could have figured that out but those are airborne divisions and they can be dropped uh, by transport aircraft and then you have what are called amphibious headquarters and these are very special units in this game that allow you to land on a coast in this case the coast of sicily and it sets up a port and an air base there for you uh, but we'll get much deeper into those as we go along so that's really the map uh, counters and hexes and when we come back next time we're going to really look at these ground counters and all of the information you can get over here about them as we see another amphibious headquarters here we're going to go into what all of this means and then if you right click what all of the, what i call the back of the card what does it mean what's the information you can get from that so thank you for joining me this has been strategy gaming dojo and when we come back that next time we'll continue to learn more about gary grigsby's war in the west thank you so much i'll talk to you next time